Party time, Mom. Don't believe uh, we can party on a Tuesday night. We can party on a Tuesday night, and that's what we're going to do right here in the Mothership, which is Studio 22, the Puppet Master Mark, driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity, sitting next to the lovely Candice, the Queen of the Ethiopian. She sits upon her throne. Uh, regal, majestic. You're very welcome. Uh, Herbert the Silent Deer stares on silently, face of shock, the same face he made when the truck hit him. Oh, my goodness. Party foul is at the pub holding down the fort, or as we call it, Mariano's Corner. Mariano's <laughs> Corner. It's always party time at Mariano's pub. Corner. And Lisa Page made me do it. What that is, I don't know. Well, we're on hiatus. It's a podcast coming back soon. Yeah. Coming back soon. Coming you back. are lovely as well. Oh, so yours are lovely too. Yes. Sitting shortly but regally. <laughs> Upon the, your <laughs> the shirt is so big, y'all. <laughs> Stu does America. Look, look at this knot. Look at, look at this knot. It's, it's like alarm. you. It's like you tied it twice. And so now I can't really sit thing. comfortably because it's like right in my back. It's right in your back. Um, Stu does America. Uh, fun show on Blaze TV. You can go to blazetv.com and sign up. Get your annual subscription. Right now, using promo code CPS, that's Chad Prather Show, not the people that come take your children for uh, human trafficking, but CPS. Um, <laughs> anyway. That's funny. It's CPS. true. Or your electric bill, CPS is also there. Half the people that troll has. you are probably needing a, to get a visit from CPS. <laughs> yeah, it could be, it could be true. Um, let's, let's do a gubernatorial update. Oh, yes. 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 Hey, How's that going? Hey, it's going fantastic. Uh, as we discussed yesterday, it is the I was walking past uh, security here at the studio, and mm -hmm. the guy goes, hey, buddy, you, uh, you still doing that uh, governor run thing? <laughs> I was like, yes, I am. Most unorthodox uh, gubernatorial run ever. That's what I ask you every day, too. Are you still on it? <laughs> oh, they coming. You still in it to win still it, Chad? It. Still in it. And so I kind of called out. Uh, over over the weekend i said um i said uh, in on twitter i said unless they're setting up targets or reloading magazines then texas doesn't need beto or mcconaughey's help with our guns chad you're such an a-hole i liked you back when you were just funny now you're just like a lib that complains about people welcome to my brand this is what we do uh i hey, listen they have both spoken out for gun control I'm anti-gun control. I don't believe in gun control. You use both hands. That's gun control, okay? Uh, they've both spoken out. You know, Beto said, hell yeah, we're coming for your guns. Remember that little sound bite from Beto? Francis. But they don't like me calling him out. Um, someone on Instagram said, McConaughey is more of a Texan than you, L-M-A-O. Uh, that's laugh my ass off for you, elderly. Uh, he's lived here his entire life, done more for this state than you could. Old Chad, in quotation marks, I don't know what that means, I, 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 that is my name, uh, ever, uh, more than Chad ever could, like fund hurricane relief efforts. You might go back and check out a little Fox News hit about what we did during Hurricane Harvey. Uh, it was quite substantial. Good God, I still have uh, bug spray in my garage. Really? From how much donate, how much bug spray we collected for, uh, but that's just what it's not enough, Harvey. Chad. It's never enough. It's no, never that enough. guy's got a man crush on you anyway. Just just stroked a check for uh, another twenty thousand dollars <laughs> for charity this past week. Nope, not enough. Uh, Texas charity. Uh, yeah, and so um, yeah, and then another person said, another person said, uh, McConaughey's not even running. Go ahead and vote for a guy who's a celebrity himself. Uh, for acting, except he does with his fake accent yelling from a truck. Holy shit. I guess old, quote, Chad has the gas station attendant vote on lock. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. And uh, your mother's Every gas station from here until... Whoever's yeah. writing that. So. I, I hope that uh, all of you gas station attendants here in Texas will vote for Chad in 2022. I'm Chad Prather, and I approve this effing message. A live look at a man selling his soul to peddle more <laughs> crappy T-shirts to his followers. We actually have high quality t shirts, so shut the f up. The highest quality, the softest t shirts. Uh, Watchchad.com is where all the fun stuff is. Um, or go to uh, shop.blazemedia.com and get a Stu Does America or a Nancy Pelosi Sucks t shirt. Oh, yeah. Or, an, oh, you, we're not doing the poops, though. <laughs> well, we're with... not on there. Not okay. on the Blaze. And we, right. don't, we, don't, we don't pedal t shirts on this ship. I wonder right. where he yeah. works at. Where does he, what is he peddling? Because everybody's working, they're all peddling I something. I think that particular guy is a musician. 
Oh, well, he's <laughs> peddling his music yeah. on people sometimes that don't even want to hear it. Yeah, he's a. If you put quotes on Chad, this guy's a quote musician. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of musicians, we have a new uh, a single out. That when I say we, the Ragamuffins, if you've seen our songs from the Sofa series on social media, say that five times really fast. Songs from the Sofa social media series. Uh, what might have been? What? Yeah. So, Go check it out. Single's little, available now, right? It's available now. What? Wherever songs Y'all are Y'all should be called the Chattamuffins. The Chattamuffins. Chattamuffins. Yes, yeah, so I'm surrounded my, by my cupcakes. <laughs> Let's, uh, gosh, I wish I had more hair. Wish I had more hair on my head. Steve, is that a mullet? No. It's, it, look. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Oh, there it is. There you I go. Had to, I had to prove that the other day in Nashville because some guy, man, you're rocking a mullet. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's not a mullet. Mullets are back in style with the they kids, are. I've noticed. This, uh, you do have so. a million reasons to be stressed out these days, but <clears throat> stressing out about your male pattern baldness. <laughs> Uh, and your receding hairline doesn't have to be one of them. Uh, go to Keeps. Keeps is going to offer you the same doctor-recommended, FDA-approved hair loss treatment. But they use the generic version, so you're only going to pay about half the cost. And here's it's a great deal, but here's the best thing about it. You don't have to go to the doctor. You can get Keeps right there online, answer a few questions, snap some pictures of your hair. Licensed doctor is going to review your info and recommend the right hair loss treatment for you, then it's going to be shipped to your door. So don't make trips to the doctor and the drugstore when you can do it all online from your couch. Get you started with a special deal. Go to keeps.com, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash loss. 50% off your first order of hair loss treatments. That's keeps.com slash loss, keeps.com slash loss. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Ah, uh, gubernatorial. I just like saying that word. Gubernatorial. Gubernatorial. So, and, and to qualify something we said on the show yesterday, uh, so people kind of said some things to me. They're like, yes, we're going to do things like have signs available. If you want to get a sign, you can put a sign in your yard. You do all that. What I'm talking about is playing the political games, the cult games, the the whole uh, you've got to you've got to do this, you got to do that. And that that amounts to nothing. You know, Einstein said in the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Um, what people think they want is some qualified, quote, politician who is just going to come in there and keep everything status quo and safe. Well, when the status ain't nothing to quo about, <laughs> sometimes it's time to change. The status quo and, and you know you're like well you you guys like trump come in here and rub the cat the wrong way well sometimes a cat needs to turn around and, and there's some things that need to turn around um uh that's that's the whole thing for me somebody asked me the other day they said well in by 2022 we won't have these mandates and these masks and all that stuff in place i said well the fact that it was ever put in place to begin with that is a dictatorial uh draconian measure that did a lot of damage uh and and the fact that they were willing to do that once means that they can do it again and again and again and i don't believe in mandates i just don't believe in telling free people like joe biden did on his little speech the other day when he said you can get together if you do everything that we say yeah you should be able to get together with a small group of people for the fourth of july well, you can kiss my fresh ass on that because let me tell you something, Joe. We ain't going by – to tell me that I can celebrate my Independence Day by as long as I do what you say, that does not make me free. I'm not celebrating freedom. I'm celebrating that I obeyed all the rules. Mm -hmm. See, I don't think Americans – and just we don't do well with this whole bunch of let's give you a whole lot of rules. Now, we understand laws – we understand that real society has laws, and, but they should be good laws. They should be laws that, that accomplish something or, or it's for the better good of people, right? If, if X, Y, Z, uh, the corner of X, Y, and Z needs a stoplight, let's put a stoplight there if it saves lives, right? But, but this whole thing of, no, we need to put stoplights all the way down the avenue because we're afraid people are going to speed – and they're going to go too fast. We got to make sure you know these little speed bumps are in place. That's that's getting draconian right there because you don't trust people to operate with liberty and freedom and responsibility. 
I'm tired of that nonsense. And if you think this whole 4th of July thing is going to stop after that, it's not. Because then we're going to roll right into, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it's going to be the same yeah. thing. And people that are following these rules, y'all are sheep. I mean, who's listening to Joe Biden anyway? <laughs> I mean, I Joe mean, Biden's not even listening to himself. He's so yeah. freaking boring. He can't boring. hear, see, speak, smell. He has no sense. Yeah. Really? Yeah. See, people, see, like, I wear my Texas shirts. See, first of all, there, there, there's, there's some honest humor in, in these kind of things. <laughs> this, people say, oh, you just want to be seditious and you don't love America. Oh, I love America very much. What I don't love is politicians specifically liberal politicians that want to control my life and and i don't trust washington dc you know i tweeted yesterday i put it on facebook i said the problem with america isn't fossil fuels it's the fossils in washington dc and somebody said this old man's gonna kick your old your ass to the curb if you don't stop talking about old people there's old people in washington dc that fight for america that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about yankee Pelosi of the world the chuck schumers the joe biden's who's been there 48 years mm. And he never done anything but a crime bill in 94. And he's still not doing anything still but creating anything. worse things. Yeah. <laughs> he's not doing anything but making it worse. Yeah. I mean, I love how he talks about, well, there's no miracle coming, but the miracle of the vaccine is here. And it's like. All of a sudden, the credit. <coughs> all of a sudden. Yeah. We're all pro-vaccine. Where do they pro think that vaccine. vaccine came from? And how do they think it got there so fast? They just That's scratched Donald the name Trump, Trump out. Right. At the top of the page, they just scratched the name Trump out and said the Biden vaccine plan or whatever. And, it, and, <coughs> and, and Biden's like, selling that to America on all the bullshit news and they're eating it up yeah and yeah and let me say something about vaccines since we did mention it and we're rabbit trailing all over the place we'll get back to the things that matter uh but they need to release the studies uh, you really need to take a look at the studies of of the vaccine and its effectiveness in israel right mm -hmm. but again joe biden is not going to do anything that israel has anything to do with uh, it, you know, Dems, they, they hate Israel. So, you know, they, they're not going to release those studies. But the vaccine's actually working. I mean, it's actually working. The spread is virtually zero yeah. in every way among those who are vaccinated. Um, see, that's the whole thing. And I loved what uh, Jackie Schlegel said on here talking about children's vaccines. It applies to this. It's not about being anti-vaccine. It's about being vaccine choice. You shouldn't have to have a vaccine passport to get on an airplane, the kind of thing that they're proposing to travel from state to state. You should have to show, show me your papers. I need to see your papers. Uh, your vaccine passport, like you've said, Steve, get a big V tattooed on your forehead so people will know. You know, get a get a UPC symbol on your forearm so yeah. they can scan it. Right. Uh, or just get you one of them, um, you know, prison camp numbers right there. I mean, a lot of that kind of smacks of history in my, my ears. But vaccine choice i don't care if you get a vaccine go get the vaccine if you feel like it's safe and good for your family i mean i i hear of elderly people who are going out and getting the vaccine good for you that is great that is fantastic i hope it 100 percent works um i'm not in a position in my life where i feel like i need to get that vaccine one day i may i may feel like it's time for me to go get the covid vaccine but that is my choice it shouldn't be a mandate mm -mm. that comes down from a joe biden that says well if you do everything we say but look at the numbers in Israel. The vaccine actually works. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I trust what's going on here in America right now. There's so much bureaucracy tied in behind it that, that I can't trust anybody. Anthony Fauci's flip-flopped back and forth and, and done all of this, you know, crazy stuff. So I, he's untrustworthy. He's a con man. Um, you're like, oh, my God. You're, somebody said to me the other day on social media, they said, oh, really? The guy's a bit of whatever, a virologist for for uh, epidemiology, whatever the hell he is, for 50 years, uh, and you're calling him a con man? Oh, no, trust me, dude. All doctors are 100% trustworthy uh, out there. There's no, there's no God complex surgeons out there. We haven't encountered any of those ever in our health care. Um, there, there's no guys out there that have ever gotten sued for malpractice because they were effing wrong just because they had MD behind their name. No, that's never no, happened. No, the only trustworthy doctors are the ones that the left choose to show us in interviews. Those are the right. doctors that we should all trust. They're the ones that are chosen Look by... You, girl, you got so fired up the microphone tried to run shoot. away from you. That's right. Yeah. Chosen by the liberal elite. Yeah. The ones who tell us what we can do, yeah, where yeah. we can go, yeah. who we can visit yeah. with. I'm going to have the biggest party for the 4th of July. Steve, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do something. I'm there. We're gonna have the biggest freaking party. We're gonna have. We're gonna have a. Uh, we're gonna celebrate our independence. I might blow a thumb off. Ooh, 
I mean, you know. That's a little aggressive, but okay, let's do it. Let's yeah. word it the soup the big, biggest super spreader <coughs> event of twenty twenty. We're gonna we're gonna man super spread. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I like it. Hopefully we don't all combust from all the fireworks <laughs> we're gonna shoot. We are. We're gonna have a fourth of July party. We're gonna get together. We might drink from the same cup. Ooh. How dare we? Awful. How dare we? Risk takers. You're, you're like, well, that's stupid. Why are you going to be so stupid? Well, it was stupid to do that back. <laughs> like, I used to go it, it, it go to some of these churches that would do common cup communion. Oh, yeah. Where everybody in the freaking room come up there and sip the wine or the grape juice out of the deal. That's I was right. Like, uh, Lord, no. I'm going to take a pass on <laughs> this one. I love you, Jesus, but I'm not going to sip out of the cup where, like, and you're eyeballing, you'd be walking to the front of the church and you're trying to look at the one part of the cup that nobody's lips have been on. Right. Well, no, then they wiped it. You yeah. know, they wiped it off. For the oh, my gosh. Yeah. Thinking about that in COVID time. You get up there and there's like a little hair floating in it. And, and you're like, oh, hell no. I just go there and lick the whole bowl. Oh. But I mean, remember we used to do, people yeah. did stupid stuff yes. like that. And we never heard of COVID. Nope. I never thought about COVID. Just drink out the common cup for communion at the church. And your sins and be like, cleared. I mean, you that right there. washed is, away after that. That <laughs> right there is not smart. Come that's the you, chalice. Come get you a drink right here. That's yeah. the chalice right there. See? <laughs> <laughs> but you go there. I mean, I'm not making fun of communion. I'm just saying. No, but but what we used to do. I mean, we've always done dumb stuff. I mean, you let the baby stick his finger in the butthole of the dog and then and then put it in his mouth. My kids used to go try and fight to get into the Alpo bag to eat dog food just because apparently it was pretty tasty to them. <laughs> we, had, we had one of ours that ate dog yeah. food. She walked around I got a, a picture of my oldest food. daughter. My oldest daughter, when she was when she was a toddler, I got a picture of her. She's arm deep in the <laughs> right Alpo, in Alpo bag yeah. trying to get in there, yeah. right? Won't put in the, the long stuff run, around. it's cheaper than all them uh, snacks that you got to buy kids. <laughs> I know. She come, she come walking around, look, her cheeks look like Nibbles, the hamster, <laughs> over at your house. <laughs> nibbles, the hamster. <laughs> and that's what, yeah. that was what, does Nibbles have rat envy now that you got the hairless guinea pig? Oh, Nibbles, no, I've tried to put them together, Nibbles and George. Nibbles wants to nip at George. Go a little too much. Yeah, yeah. a little bit, but. Poor George. That's because George is different. <clears throat> George is different with a big set of balls. Yeah, <laughs> he got the biggest balls you ever seen on a ro rodent. I, I don't. I've never inspected a lot of. Uh... Oh well, he was on Glenn's show a couple weeks ago, and Glenn was whoa, <laughs> Mo whoa, whoa, holy, whoa, piggy pig. Wow, that could be a paperweight. Two well, paperweights. This pig has a couple of guineas. That's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's. But you know, I don't see nibbles near enough on your Instagram. No, I know, feed. I know. I, I got to get more of her. Got to get yes. more nibbles. That's like people going where. Willie. Yeah, that's right. It's the same people like, why don't you ever show Griffin or Nibbles anymore? Yeah, where's Willie? Ugh. I need proof of life. People ask us where Willie is. People message me. Ask Chad where Will and what's going on with this truck? Why is this this is the funniest sociological experiment I've done yet. Yeah. That people are losing their mind wanting to know where the dog is. You gotta bring him back and just surprise them. Like I might. Twist. I might. They're like, we demand right. proof of life. And I'm like, Easy there, Russell Crowe. <laughs> what the hell? Like, send in the hostage up. negotiators. Golly. It's the funniest stuff ever. But anyway, that's life. That's how it goes. I, I do everything I can as unorthodox as possible in life. It's just how I'm wired. I'm backwards, Lisa. My brain is screwy. That's why this whole thing, running for governor, that's why where I started this conversation, we're going to do a lot of the, the traditional stuff that's out there. Obviously, we're out there. But it's not about telephones. It's not about telephones. It's not about televisions. It's about teleperson. Mm. And that's what we're all about. You tell your friends. If you, if you like what I stand for, if you like what I believe, sanctity of life, pro-Second Amendment, no mandates, pro-freedom. Medical freedom. Uh, medical freedom. Uh, vaccine choice, uh, small government, less taxes in terms of property taxes in Texas and maintaining our legacy of no state income tax. If you, if you believe in those things and somebody who will speak common sense in order to put Texas first and you believe that, somebody said, well, Texas doesn't, have, you just don't love America. You want to put Texas first. Again, back to the Texas thing. No, our deal is we want Texas. Texas means we want Texans to be able to legislate Texas. We want you, the citizen of Texas, to be able to go out and vote on the things you believe should happen in this state, not the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., with their bony, skinny, greedy hands reaching in to our coffers. But no. And you're like, well, y'all asked for federal help. Unfortunately, we did. 
unfortunately, we, we asked for federal help. We asked for, uh, or Greg Abbott asked for uh, uh, a federal emergency, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I get that. But that's a crisis that should have never happened. And if you were, were, were governor, it wouldn't have happened. I don't believe it would have. Yeah. Because you know what? I wouldn't have had somebody from Massachusetts or Germany running our power grid. Yeah, right. I wouldn't have 25% of our energy coming from a windmill that we knew was going to freeze whenever it got too cold. No. No. Coal, electric, uh, coal, uh, oil and gas, and nuclear. If you were governor, my house wouldn't be flooded. That's right. We are not going to, we're not going to do anything that, that hinders carbon emissions. How about that? And you'll keep the styrofoam cups flowing at the Chick-fil-A. Yes, that's right. And no paper straws, damn it. None. None. Plastic all the way. And no daylight savings time. And yeah, and oh, no more cloth oh, hang on. bags. Hang on, because we got to talk about this. <laughs> but another thing we're not going to do, can, you, can, you, can, you can buy your beer before noon on Sunday. Oh, Thank yeah. you. And the liquor stores can open if they want to. And you can take a roadie from the restaurant. <laughs> If yeah. you want to walk down the street, you can take a freaking roadie with you. You can walk <laughs> down the road with your beer. They do it in Savannah, Georgia. They do it in New Orleans. You can do it in Texas. I love all of this. Yes, I know. It's called freedom. <laughs> hey, the curators at Bespoke Post have done it again this winter with an all-new lineup of essential box of awesome collections for guys guaranteed to upgrade your life. So very <coughs> man-centered. I love them. Um uh, uh, they got the showcase pieces to level up your indoor hosting skills, cozy threads for your blustery days. Bespoke Post, I love them. They only send guys the best stuff every month, no matter what you're into. Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. Get started by taking the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. Uh, release new boxes every single month across a ton of different categories. Free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel anytime. 45 bucks, but you're going to get at least $70 worth of gear inside. 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up. Boxofawesome.com. Use promo code WATCHCHAD at checkout. Boxofawesome.com. Get 20% off with WATCHCHAD. We'll be right back. So I'm going to hold this picture up. I don't know if we can get it, Mark. This, here's a guy. You know what he's holding up? This is on Twitter. He's holding up his, uh, and by the way, his face is sloped and his eyes are closed on one side, uh, which could have nothing to do with the vaccine. But this is his COVID-19 <laughs> vaccination record card. And uh, he tweeted, he said, um, this is Jeremy Newberger, political satirist, 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 satirist. Um, Anyway, he said, this is going to be me at every supermarket, cafe, hardware store, and public space. I'm going to flash this thing like I'm in Dragnet. Um, so there you go. Congrats. Great job. You're fantastic. Oh, he You're was amazing. showing it like oh. he was excited and proud. Yeah. He's going to flash it up. He's got his vaccine card. Yeah, that's and, a new so, virtue. I hate people like that. And so, But Ugh. look at his face. Look how he's, like, he's already getting the side effects. <laughs> I was just going to say, he's showing everybody he got Bell's palsy from the vaccine or something. <laughs> that's why I really thought you were going to say. I mean, like his face is drooping on one side. I'm like, bro. Bro, that's know. not. That, you, look, Maybe that's the whole don't be flashing that face. coming yeah. out. Kind of funny. Um, people are just... Yeah, people wow. are fun. They're fun is right. So so the thing that I've said uh, over and over again is, so I, I was, you know, I go on my little morning walks, been losing a little weight, you know, been trying to do my thing. Yeah. And um, I've been uh, I've been going on my morning walks. Yeah. And it always amazes me that people out there breathing the fresh air of the world, still out there d walking to and fro, wearing their masks. I, I'm not going to do that, right? I'm just not going to wear a mask to do that. Certain places, certain times, if you want me to wear a mask, I'm not going to argue with me with you. I will put the mask on, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to make an issue out of it. Most times, what I choose to do is go places that do not require a mask. Yeah, and by now, we know the places that don't That's require right. masks. So I'm going to choose to go to those places. Um, and, and by the way, I will tell you a certain trend. Let me get back to the mask in a minute. What I've noticed is 
the places that most demand you wear a mask to come into their business are the places that were not affected by the mandates or the masks. So they were some big, huge conglomerate corporate owned deal. And those people didn't feel that pressure down on the local level. Whereas your small businesses that are out there are like, F that we're ready to be open. And when I say open, I mean open. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we're not doing this whole thing. We want business, mm -hmm. whatever it takes to get business back in here. Uh, so I've just kind of noticed that little trend. So you start to notice the locally owned, smaller yes. businesses, yes. they're the ones that you start frequenting because you realize that they're not the one, they, their bottom line truly got affected. Now, uh, but I see these people and, and it's not that you're wearing a mask that bothers me, although it does bother me for different reasons. What really truly gets me is the mask wearing virtue signaling. And the false sense of security and superiority that comes to these people who put their mask on and then look at you like, I'm doing my part. Yes, yep. I'm doing the noble thing. I'm doing, I'm doing my part. No, you're breathing your own filth back into your mouth and nose as you walk or exercise or, or whatever you may be doing. It's disgusting. It is disgusting. And here's the thing. Candace brought this up on a text message. And I think she's correct. You know, right now you get these 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 uh, marketed ads on TV about you may have mesothelioma. Yes. Have you been exposed to asbestos? Did you work on a battleship in the Navy back in 1969 in the Charleston Harbor? You may have been exposed to asbestos. Call right now for a class action lawsuit. You may blah, 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 blah. How long before these class action lawsuits start talking about did you use Germex mm -hmm. in 2020? If you use Germex, your kids might have had over Germex exposure. And now you have rubbed cancer all over your skin incessantly. How long before we've got some kind of chemical uh, uh, consequence to all of this sanitizer crap, this, this distilled nonsense that we're wiping all over ourselves? And it raises another question, Lisa Page. If I put 99.9% .9 effective hand sanitizer on my hands, what happens if I do it twice? Does that kill the other point? Does it cancel out the oh, first one, yeah, the application? One, it, I mean, or does it kill, will that go ahead and kill 100% of the germs if I do it twice, right? So, because I'm worried about that 0.1%. Right, and like, is there a limit to how many times you can <coughs> sanitize yeah. your hands a day? But I remember when this all was starting last year, you know, Stu's buried in these studies, and he said that <laughs> washing your hands is actually better than doing the sanitizing oh, things. Yeah. Like just, but these are just common sense things that we all should have been doing before the stupid pandemic hit. Right. So if I go into the airport, I come through TSA security. You know what I do? I go to the restroom and I wash my hands. Exactly. You know why? Because y'all's nasty asses have been touching everything. Right. And I don't want your funk on my hands. Exactly. I don't want my own funk on my hands. Mm -hmm. If you swab underneath your fingernails right now, whoever's listening, and then go swab a public toilet, Put both of them in a Petri dish. You're going to grow more bacteria from under your fingernails. Because mm -hmm. we nasty. Mm -hmm. You booger picking, dog food eating, nasty, gross, uh, party foul Steve's out there. Uh, yeah, it's I, nasty. It's true. I, I wash mine. It's true. I, you got to wash your hands. Oh, I mean, yeah. that, but that's common sense, I mean, right? This is stuff that we teach our kids when, when they're old enough to walk and use the bathroom on their own. Like, yeah. why, why as adults are we having to be told this? Yeah. Well, people want to say... Well, you just don't believe in that this is a real thing. I, I do yeah. believe it's a real thing. It can be a very dangerous thing, just like anything else can be a dangerous thing. Um, drinking, drinking out of the same cup with each other can be the same, can be dangerous. Getting pneumonia, it's dangerous. Getting the flu, it can be dangerous. Well, flu's gone away now. I mean, I mean, it we doesn't was exist anymore. Almost to the flu, so I mean, this is amazing. Yeah, this no is matter like what. a miracle cure for the flu is COVID nineteen. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see what next fall brings. What other? <laughs> well, they've already said they've already said Chuck Todd was interviewing Fauci, Chuck Todd, on CNN. Chuck Todd, sleepy eyed Chuck Todd. Uh, he said. Uh, he said we're going to see more pandemics. Wait for it. Wait for it. Remember, you blame it on two things these days. We're going to see more and more pandemics in the years ahead because of climate change. <laughs> uh. But they ought to put it right on Saturday Night Live at this point. So Saturday Night Live will, I think, eventually get to a skit like that. But I was <laughs> going to say, Stu, we're always talking about the vaccine. And, of course, he's very pro-vaccine. He was saying, though, that 
as we move ahead with these pandemics that are going to occur, he said now with this vaccine, you just tweak a couple things and it's a lot easier to now come up with va- different vaccines moving forward to prevent other pandemic like viruses right. that occur. I'm only telling you this because, you know, and he knows a thousand million times more than I do about this stuff. But he was saying that's the great thing about this vaccine is that you can now we, we the have research made, is done. Right. They just did it and how fix mu- it. How much does those <laughs> vaccines cost? Um, are they costing the government? Are they giving I mean, them out free for, for free? I mean, it's free for the people that are getting them. Free for the people that are getting them. Well, somebody's paying for it. I mean, the well, yeah. pharmaceutical companies ain't making it for free. Federal government. Yeah. So, I mean, they're just printing money. Yeah. I, I said yeah, this yeah. last That's week the on thing. the show. I yeah. said this on the last yeah. week on the show. Y'all don't understand. Exactly. The money ain't there. The money ain't theirs and the money ain't there. Uh huh. They're giving away money that ain't there or theirs. That's that's three ways to use the word there, it's, all in correct grammar. They're yeah. giving away money that's not theirs and it's not there. And I'm just telling you, stuff like that, stuff like the one point nine million dollar trillion dollar, sorry, stimulus thing, the money's not there. The dollar is going to burst. You better be investing in gold, silver, uh, crypto, whatever it is. Me and Candace, we got it nailed down. We're all over that crypto. Spend Y'all that are gonna be supporting us. While it's still worth something. <laughs> yeah, got it. Yeah, I mean you better better start investing yeah. in some stuff. Um, it's insane. Insane. You about to sneeze? Yeah. Are you about to sneeze? Don't you dare spread that COVID over Studio Twenty Two. The she mothership remains a sanitary place. Oh no! I'm yeah. Look at the baby. light. See, look at that. You just cured my oh. sneeze. What did you do? Did you just wave a little wand? I did. Okay. Hey, I got some great news to share about our friends at Patriot Mobile. They just expanded their coverage dramatically, which will make it easier for even more Americans to dump the big name carriers who charge way too much, and donate your money to leftist causes. Proud to partner with Patriot Mobile because they never send a penny to the left and never have and never will. They will never silence you. And they're the only American uh, Christian conservative wireless provider that's out there. You can switch with confidence because they use the same networks as the large providers but charge way less. And it's amazing how much less. Uh, Switching is easy. Keep your phone number. Bring your own phone or buy a new one. Build your own bundles with multi-line discounts that save even more. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash chad. You can call their U.S.-based customer service team at 972-PATRIOT. They'll help you out. 972-PATRIOT. Veterans, first responders, you're going to save even more. This month, you'll get a free Premier Activation where they set up the phone for you and send you a special gift with offer code CHAD. I spell it, Chad. PatriotMobile.com slash Chad or 972-PATRIOT. We will be right back. I love uh, sometimes Googling my name. You ever do that? And then hit news. Well, just <laughs> <laughs> and then see. Well, there's that, but then I like to scroll to the bottom to see what the connected, they always shows what the, the um, connected searches are in relationship to you. Um, so there it is. What kind of dog does Chad Prather have? Right there. Um, famous dog, doesn't even know it. Um, what is Chad Prather's net worth? Mm, what's to say? Um, I don't know. I Should click and see what what your net worth is. Yeah, and that Chad Prather Candace is still up. Stop, really? People love to find Candace. People love Candace. Yeah, Mark Mark's got him an eight cow woman. If you go to search me, I'm um I'm involved with the big FBI scandal. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. Um, yeah. the Chad Prather Show cast is Chad Prather still married? Uh, where does Chad Prather live? Chad nope. Prather political party. Um, yeah, the, mm-hmm. those are, those are the Google searches that are going on. And, uh, the, uh, Fort Worth Star Telegram said that, um, says that, uh, I'm, I'm making a show of running for governor and, uh, kind of like, uh, Bud Kennedy's uh, making a show of being a political analyst when he's a food critic for the Fort Worth Star Telegram. <laughs> See, the great thing is when you become governor, you not only can, you know, make things happen, change everything for the better, but also put on a show. Like, yeah. a, you, you want a show? We'll give you a ragamuffin show. That's right. Right, right there. Put a couch why, on a stage. Why in the world are we going to pay George Strait $1.7 right. $1. million for the inauguration right. to perform when the ragamuffins can just roll out a sofa and go, 
All the gold. Yes. See, saving money right there. You're not even governor yet. We're already exactly. saving money on talent fees. There it is. Yeah. There it is. It's it, science, people. We put it in my super science. pack. <laughs> we right. put it in my super pack. <laughs> this is logical. Way too logical, You're man. You're going to have one of those dinners where you pay like $1,000 for a plate with a pork chop and mashed potatoes on it? Yeah, like yeah. this been sitting there on a burner all day long. And, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, <clears throat> and you can and you can have dinner. You have a party foul dinner. Yes. Yeah. Listen, at, at the end of the day, man, here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You're like, well, well, governor, as governor, you have to do all of this stuff and you got you to know about this. You got to know about this. <laughs> What you have is the right people who know about those things, right? You, you don't know everything. I don't expect Greg Abbott to know everything about the Texas power grid and how that power is delivered in the middle of a, of a snowmageddon. I don't know. You know he, I don't expect him to know those things. But there should be the people advising him that are there that, that he can trust, right? Uh, you should have those. At the end of the day... That is, when you say those things, that is indicative of the fact that government has gotten too big. That you want government to run every damn thing in your life from cradle to grave. I do not have a vision for that. What I want to see happen is you run your life, you run your business, a free market economy. We turn you loose to go be liberated and responsible to run your life and your family's life, period, period. It, it shouldn't be that hard. The role of government is to protect you and then get the hell out of the way and ensure your freedoms. But get the hell out of the way. Stop regulating and regimenting and legislating all of these things in people's lives. That's not that hard of a job. And then you know what you do? You stand up there in front of them and you say, you know what, I believe in you guys. We're going to keep letting you govern yourself, and we're going to continue to do the things behind the scenes to make this great state as great as it can possibly be so that not only are you free, but you got an opportunity to be freer than you've ever been in your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, at what point in time is a politician going to stand up and tell you that? I want you to be so free that you're sick of being free. Like, you're like, you know what? Somebody needs to handcuff me because my life's so good. I got to sit on my hands to keep from clapping. I feel I mean, a little irresponsible right now. I mean, that's yeah, how, yeah. I, like, like, I, like, oh my God, you mean to tell me I got so much grace that I can go out there and, and give the stress in my life a big old middle finger and I'm free to do that? And then I can go make money to fund my freedom? Holy crap. What a concept. And, and I'm not going to get taxed to death and I'm not going to have to fill out Let's say I want to be a beautician. Let's say I want to run a salon, right? Dude, I mean, maybe I'm really good at cutting hair, but I'm not so good at paperwork. Maybe we simplify that whole licensing process, you know, where you got to do, you got to go through the school and you got to go through the licensing. You got to get all this business paperwork done. Maybe we simplify all that so that you can go do what you're really good at doing and skilled at doing, and you don't have to deal with all these government-driven regulations. Imagine having that kind of freedom. Not to mention all the fees involved with every, every step of that. Everything. For anything you'd want to do. Imagine this. Imagine, and we're notorious for our toll roads in Texas, right? Yes. Okay, we set up these toll booths to pay tolls in order to pay for those roads. Fine and good. But my God, you gonna tell me after 50 years of running them toll tags, we hadn't paid for that road yet? Right. No, because now, they're owned by China and Germany. Now, now they're they're filling the coffers of God knows who. Not only the bureaucrats, but like you said, foreign countries. Yeah. So why don't we take the toll booths down? Because the roads are paid for. Let's just be honest. And let's maybe resurface uh, Main Street in Dallas because you can't walk through that or ride through that without your dentures rattling in your head because the roads are so damn bumpy. Why don't we resurface some crap out there, rebuild infrastructure? Could Maybe we finish I-35? I don't know, just a thought. Because I drove yesterday from Fort Worth, Texas to Roanoke, Texas, and there was not one mile that wasn't under construction. Mm -hmm. Not one mile for 35 miles. Not one mile wasn't under construction. Can we, can we maybe fix what exists and stop creating new projects because I 35 has been under construction for, for half a century. Mm -hmm. Since they built it, they've been redoing it. People, people running into each other because it can't fit 
on between the concrete barrier and the barrier on the other side yeah my truck is like i like i'm holding my breath my butt holes yeah. puckered i'm doing kegels just trying to drive a freaking truck down a highway because <laughs> i'm and then you got some construction guy stepping out in there and turning a sign around saying slow or stop uh -huh. and now i'm backed up for three hours and all i want to do is go a mile and a half down the road to the buckies can't do it no nope. see this is what i'm talking about get i'm not saying don't better things but better it get it done and then get the hell out of the way it's sick but what do we do oh well we need to hire another ambulance chasing lawyer to who to be to govern over us so he can make sure that our paperwork is some shit that you can't ever understand without some decoder ring that came from your little orphan annie show you can't do it here too and forthwith we are going to demand that by standingly we're going to i mean what in the hell are we talking about i just want to sell t-shirts right i want to start an llc not go broke in lawyers fees I mean, this is kind of stupid stuff that's going on Steve. Uh, if that if that was not the best pitch ever i'm telling you no, it, I mean, really like i he, love what Frank, kinky frankie kiedman said kinky friedman said how hard can it be yeah he wasn't <laughs> wrong in that it doesn't need to be that hard people complicate things if you don't believe in all the freedoms that you just spoke about then maybe you shouldn't be in this country i'm just saying yeah i don't need joe biden's none uh, permission mm -mm. i don't need the governor of any state's permission to go out and run my business and the little pinhead in fort worth texas that chased me through the restaurant going sir you gotta put your mask on get a life kid you ain't got that much to live for i promise you if you're feeling unhealthy you're 23 waiting tables and serving beer dear god son the crap you're putting in people's face all day between the nachos and the liquor is killing more people than covid so shut the f up See how good I've gotten at cleaning this so, thing up? Yeah, it's yeah. Really great. Paid for by Prather for Governor 2022. I'm Chad Prather, and I approve this message. <laughs> the best ever. I get fired up over this stuff. Oh, it's not, not at all. hard, Lisa. It's really, really not. No, it's not. No. Y'all hang tight. We'll be right back. You need a beer. <laughs> Uh, go get the new single. What might have been? It's good. Make you make you want to fall in love all over again. You're gonna be voting Chad Prather before you know it. The ragamuffins, go get it. Make sure you go to where podcasts are offered. Give us a five star review or rating, and then a good review, uh, so we can bump on up in them ratings and rankings and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, it's good stuff, man. It's interesting. I've been I've been meeting with some potential other gubernatorial candidates. Oh yeah. And stuff like that. There's good people out there. There's good people in the state of Texas. Um, but, but, you know, and then and there, was a, there was a guy who was running that uh, dropped out because of some accusations that are out there. And say, that's a damn shame. He's a good dude. You know, mm -hmm. these guys, you know, they just, they're like, eh, I don't want to face the heat. And, and the heat ain't fun. But what are you going to do? I mean, you're the guy for the job, though. What are you going to do? I mean, you're no matter. You're the guy for the job if you don't want to face the heat. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like Meghan Markle. She couldn't handle being a princess, so now she wants to go be president? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, that that's... <laughs> I can't even take that story seriously. It's, I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Oh, they were scared. The royal family was scared that Archie was going to be dark-skinned. <laughs> Archibald was going to be dark-skinned. See, that's such bullshit. Every family, I don't care if you're black, you're white, or whatever. You're, oh, you're going to have a dark baby. Or you're going to have a... You're going to. You're like, oh, you're going to have the prettiest baby. Your skin complexion is so pretty. I don't you know, know they said it. They probably said I mean, they're going to have a dark baby. Okay. I mean, but I you got to understand, like, understand how it is in Britain, first we, of all. If, they, they have those. They're not so sensitive to the thing like we are we, here in America. Uh, yeah, that is true. They're, they're, there's a whole built-in culture over there in, in considering those things. But us as Americans 14 seconds, should say quick. give a shit less about what they're doing over there. Steve says shit a lot these days. Oh, he's Sorry, fired I'm, up. Well, it's because he's nasally Sleep today. deprived. Yeah. He's yeah, got his sinus well, issues. Really we good. love you. God bless you. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>